Hallo Uta. Hallo. Das ist ja schön, wunderbar dich zu sehen. Hallo. Uh. Uh. <lacht> wie toll, wie toll. Fantastisch. Uta, wir wollten heute mit dir über Peter sprechen, but we decided to speak in English. Because we have a lot of people from abroad looking at our Instagram live talks. So thank you very much for joining. And um, yeah, it's here is Katja as well. Hi, Hi Katja. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> And I think before we, we really start to speak with you, Katja will make a short introduction about, um, about Uta Rukamp. Ooh. Can you listen to it, please? <laughs> I'm already curious. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yeah. I'm very, very happy to talk to Dr. Uta Rukam today. And um, yeah, it's a classic that we start with a short introduction of um, achievements and former projects. So, Uta Rukam is a curator at the Kunstmuseum Wolfsburg since 2010 already. Uh, the Kunstmuseum Wolfsburg is, um, uh, was inaugurated in the 90s, 1994, and the collection is based on key works from minimal art, conceptual art, um, and art of folklore up to contemporary art. And they um, have a very ambitious program of curated exhibitions. Um, Uta herself, she studied art history and Romance philology, um, French and Italian and ethnology, exactly like me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she studied in Aachen and in um, Münster and in Florence, Italy. And the main focus of her research is portrait painting from the 20th and uh, 21st centuries. And her master thesis was on uh, Francesco Clemente and um, her PhD thesis on American and um, English portrait paintings um, after 1945. So uh, portraits are very uh, close to Uta's heart and I think uh, this will come <laughs> up again when we talk um, about Peter Hugo with Uta in a moment. Um, at the Kunstmuseum Wolfsburg as a curator, she um, got a lot of attention for the exhibitions um, that she initiated and curated and I would really like to name a few of them, just a few. For example, 2013, it was a, a solo show uh, on Steve McCurry. Um, in the same year, um, a group show called Slapstick, and that was um, works by Francis Alice, uh, John Bock, Fishy Weiss, Bruce Norman, Gordon Mutter Clark, for example, in an encounter with historical movie sequences by Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, and Laurel and Hardy. Uh, in 2015, um, a mono um, show dedicated to Jeppe Hein. 2016 and 17, a group show, This Was Tomorrow, about the invention of pop art in Great Britain. And now, 2017, uh, the huge comprehensive re uh, mid-career retrospective on Peter Hugo called The Devil and the Deep Sea. <laughs> Here oh, we are. Yeah, started in Rostock, uh, initiated and curated by Uta Wukam. And uh, after that, I traveled to the um, Museum for Kunst und Kulturgeschichte in Dortmund, and after that, to Lisbon, to the Barada Museum. This was a great traveling show, <laughs> with more than 250 works by Peter Ego from um, altogether, I think, 15 uh, groups of works, 15 series. Um, in 2018, there was a great a show um, called Facing India, for the first time uh, a, sh a show dedicated to um, Indian female artists, contemporary artists in Germany, um, who take, um, yeah, took a look on um, the reality of their country, um, artistically and politically, very important show. 2019, Robin Road, one of the last projects, and upcoming will be uh, in 2020, in the fall, if everything goes well, in Alamunde, um, on Everyone's Lips, uh, a show, a thematic show on the oral and art and culture, and uh, a work by Ulrike Rosenberg, one of our artists, will um, go cool. to Wolfsburg on loan. But today, we would really um, put a focus on Peter Ego's work um, that Uta knows very well, and. Uh, yeah, one of our main passions, and um, yeah, mainly the Wolfsburg show, but also other work that we can show in our living storage. 
So, great. Thank you very much, uh, Katya. So, okay. but before we go in media threes, um, again, another question. Um, how, how have you been in this corona times? How did you so far uh, experience these terrible times? Yeah, we're all working from home. Uh, yeah. like colleagues from other museums as well. And in March, I traveled to Austria to install a show. Then I had to go into quarantine. So for me, the home office already started in the beginning of March. Okay, and, wow. Yeah, so that's a long time. That's a long time. And uh, now we are slowly going back. The museum is reopening on Saturday. So uh, once a week, I'm going to the museum now. But the rest of the, most of the time, I'm really at home and trying um, to forward exhibition preparations for home, which is quite difficult if you work internationally. But it's also kind of nice to have the exchange with all the colleagues in other museums and other countries yeah. and to see what they are doing, how do, do they deal with the crisis. They are also working from home, but we're all trying to support each other. And I think this is also a very nice experience. And, and are you organizing Zoom meetings then with your colleagues or, or how does it work or is it mainly by a phone? Um, how, how do oh, you see it? I'm learning a lot at the moment. So okay. I, I, did Zoom, I did Hangout, I did uh, WhatsApp for group calls, uh, Skype yeah. conferences, so everything what is possible uh, we are trying. And yeah, so what, that's what I do. I have project meetings with the architects on Skype, trying to develop an architecture for the next show online. Okay. So this okay. is a completely new experience, but I yeah. also, I'm learning a lot. So what is yeah, possible yeah. to do online? And uh, on the, on the, from the private point of view, normally I'm commuting every day from Berlin, so it's also nice not to have to take the train every day. Of course, of course, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fine, Uta. We were, we had, we prepared a little bit um, uh, about Peter. Mm -hmm. So, I, by the way, I just spoke to him this morning, and um, he's he's fine so far. He is uh, not in Cape Town at the moment. He left Cape Town with his family, so they are in the countryside and the seaside mm -hmm. with his two kids and his wife. And uh, yeah, they are very very uh, yeah, calm and, and, and of course they have a lot to do with homeschooling and, and all these things and South Africa maybe is not the best place to be at the moment. Uh, so I think we are re really very fortunate how it works here in Germany when you compare it with the rest of the world. So. Yeah, we are definitely. I think lockdown in South Africa is really tough. They're yeah, not yeah. allowed to step outside. They're really locked in in their houses. So yeah. There are a lot of sorrows. So, um, Peter, if you can see this. Hello. <laughs> I haven't yet seen him that he is looking. <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> <one> later. <laughs> maybe later, exactly. But he, you know, anyway, when, when we spoke, he, he said that I sent my best wishes in regards to you and a big kiss oh. and much love and mm -hmm. all, all uh, yeah, what, what, what you like to, to receive from him. And um, I don't, I, Peter is, is now back on Instagram, but I think to make a live talk with him will be quite difficult. And yeah. therefore we are really very happy that, that, that you, you, you agreed to speak with us with us about him. So we wanted to, to go, we, um, we prepared a little bit the, the books of Peter, just a moment. Oops. So here is your catalog, Uta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> you know it? <laughs> yeah, I've seen it before, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. How was the how was the, the preparation of this exhibition for you? How the, did it turn out? So you were working on it since a long time for a long time, I think. Huh? Yeah, I think we've been working for it uh, about a year before we opened the show, and it was really nice to. I mean, it was a mid-career retrospective, so it was really nice to see where it all started from series like Looking Aside and um, yeah that was the point of departure and then dive deeper and deeper into the work of Peter 
And of course, he is a really good artist to talk to. I mean, there are a lot of artists who don't like to talk about their work, but Peter does. And this yeah. also helped a lot. And we also have small texts by him in the catalog, which is really unique. I think somebody explaining each, each series he did. So uh, actually, it was a very great uh, experience. And um, so you, you, uh, what was what was the the starting point? How did you get interested in Peter's work, or what what was your fascination about him that you decided to do a solo exhibition on such a big solo exhibition? Well, I, I, I stumbled across his work. Um, I think it was, I don't know, uh, some at some time about 2013, 2014 where yeah. he was nominated for a, a little award and there was a work from the Permanent Error series. Yeah. And that really struck me because the Permanent Error series is very political, but at the same time it has a very particular aesthetics in terms of color. So for me it was kind of intriguing and this is where I started to follow the work. And so here we are, Permanent Error series. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> which is on the dump in, in, in Art of Lodgy, which is really uh, a kind of a apocalyptic place, I would say, the way he yeah. took a lot of, of uh, photographs. I mean, he's really famous for that series. This is one um, work we had in a, another show in 2013. Um, if you go back in the book, two pages back, uh, the guy with the cables on his head, um, we already showed this picture in a in an exhibition in 2013 at the Kunstmuseum Wolfsburg, and then I followed his work, and then I discovered. To be honest, at the very beginning, I thought maybe I'd do a group show on on photography from from South Africa, and yeah. then I realized that already Peter's work is so rich that okay. it, would be, it would be nice to do a story. This is how it all began. It happened. Mm. Yeah. So here's a very another very very famous um, famous image of of Peter. Yeah, that's from the Messina Musina series, and uh, that's it's also so typical uh, for Peter um, and analyzes analyzing society. And I mean, the three of them they look like a holy family, you know. Yeah. And, uh, this is what distracts me most about Peter that he really uses a lot of art rhetorical references in his works, but still doing an analysis of societies in form of portraits. And he helped yeah. like a very cool white couple. Um, and, and yeah, so it's yeah. a lot about contradiction in society, I would say. <laughs> Um, he's mainly known in, in the world for this, this hyena series. So this is, I think, um, yeah, that was, was published, I think, in 2007 and, and, and worldwide. And, you know, everybody was speaking about this, this hyena series. And if the people don't know the name Peter Go, they know the photographs of the hyenas. And um, in your exhibition, there were, like, all the, the different series, you, you gave them like like uh yeah the same the same um value yeah i mean this is of, as you said that's definitely uh, his most famous series we had 16 different series in the show yeah. and this was like a masterpiece room uh, towards the end of the show because they are really big. We, we showed them yeah. in, the, in the very big sizes okay. and they are completely overwhelming. And I think what makes them so famous is that they are so strong in terms of physicality, but also you just don't understand what is happening on the picture. The muscles, yeah. the man, so the muscles and the hyenas, the monkeys. So, yeah, I think that's really a signature work of, of Peter. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're just uh, starting now to, to have a little look at, uh, at the computer because okay. uh, we have some pictures from, from, from your show, from both book. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> <Going next year. laughs> yeah, later we will go downstairs and have a look at some, okay. some, some, some 
originals originals but but here i wanted to show you because i think the i like the this the display so much uh, how how you arranged the show and especially with the colors so this is the series 1994 for example where you have chosen this brown background yeah i mean everybody was like if i was kidding when i saw when i said i would like to have brown walls um, peter liked it from the very beginning Yeah. This was the starting uh, series of the show. Um, it's called uh, 1994, and it's all it's from Rwanda in South Africa. So uh, 1994 was the beginning or uh, the end of apartheid. Nelson Mandela became president in South Africa, but it was also the year of the genocide in Rwanda. And all these kids are born in 1994 or later. And... Peter is taking photographs of them in nature. Most of them um, are placed uh, on the earth or in, yeah, they're in very different settings. And yeah. it looks kind of archaic at the, first, at the first glance. But if you get closer and then if you know that Peter has been, for example, in Rwanda before, you see it's not like unspoiled nature, it's full of history. So this yeah. is where the genocide happened. Um, this is where a young generation has to deal with the, with the baggage, with the historical baggage, baggage of what happened on that earth in 1994 in Rwanda and even in South Africa. So uh, this is a complete new generation, but embedded in, in, in history. And I think it's a very, very strong uh, series from Peter. And I wanted the show to start with Uh, with a new series that was a new series at the time in 2017 mm -hmm. and then I wanted like the idea of the earth and what is all hidden in the earth and all the history in the earth to be transferred in the wallop in, in the color of uh, in the brown color so yeah and I think it really matched as well so uh, I'm still happy with that decision <laughs> yeah yeah so and then the next uh, was this permanent error section With a white yeah. background. With a white background, exactly. So maybe, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, because this is where he reduced the color a little bit with the series. And so he flattened a little bit the color. And I think because this is such an apocalyptic place where he took this photograph, it needs yeah. a really neutral background. And, yeah. uh, so that's why I decided to keep it in a white cube because it becomes all the more surreal if you see these settings in the white cube of a museum. <laughs> yeah, really straightforward and, and, and um, yeah. Yeah. very yeah. clear what it's yeah. about. Mm -hmm. This is a very light grayish blue. Yeah. <laughs> for the, the Messina Mosina series. Yeah, I mean... This was a very important series because later when he started his series in, I think it's very much um, linked to Messina Musina and uh, Messina Musina is a border town. So it's kind of a town where people are passing through and um, I thought it needs some, I don't know, for me this reddish blue was a color Which, which, which suited most. And um, he, this is where he started to take uh, portraits. There's the famous one again we saw before yeah. in the book. Um, this is where he started to do still lives as well. And the still lives are commenting the society, I think, living in the city or commenting the South African society. Um, yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a hunting area. He takes a still life of these uh, decorative animals, so there's a lot of humor in it as well. And, I think and a, lot, a lot of uh, big um, important part of the portraits are the surroundings, so the yeah. natural um, yeah. surroundings, uh, where, how people live and, and how their homes look and their everyday um, circumstances. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And uh, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, looking aside. Um, where he really chooses this passport format. Uh, yes, Peter. And there is Peter, and yeah, there's a self portrait uh, of him as well. 
This is also something very important to know about him, that he always identifies with the people he photographs and um, making himself part of the series. So, so he becomes part of the series and becomes like, equal to the people he's photographing and he always yeah. has a relation with the people he's photographing and this is why these portraits are so intense um, yeah i think this is, this is a really important thing to know about peter he never just takes a photograph he always gets to know the people and there's yeah. always, uh, a special connection and he's waiting for the for the right moment to capture the identity that is why you get so close <laughs> Um, I had once the, the, the pleasure that he did a portrait of, of, of a collector and me together. And it was really a very interesting um, experience because um, there is a long, long process. Huh? And, and he's always speaking with you and waiting and then you are waiting and then he speaks again. And, you know, and you, you feel that he's just waiting for the right moment, you know, and, and while, while he's always working on the camera. <laughs> in speaking with you. So and here we have... Hmm? Sorry, no, after you. Hmm. Um, and here's Rwanda. Yeah, that was the, the series I was relating to um, in terms of the, the first series we saw, 1994, the kids he photographed. And he has been to Rwanda before and he kind of photographed the topography of the genocide. And... Yeah. Uh, this is one of the most difficult series to look at because absolutely yeah. because you just look of you just see all these marks and you all you see the murder and you see uh, the blood and you see the bones and yeah it's it's very cruel I think <laughs> yeah. It's, um, yeah, in, in 1994, when the genocide was, uh, Peter was 18 years old, so he is really, like, like uh, it's a very important moment in his life as well. Yeah, he went there several times, uh, finding yeah. himself just because he had to see it with his own eyes. And at yeah. that time, people weren't properly buried, so you just could go and photograph all the bones. And, yeah. and there were no real tombs and everything, so uh, this is what it what it makes even more real. Yeah. Mm. So and here we are. So this we we don't speak about this because we have it downstairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is as well. Yeah. We don't speak about this. Don't. <laughs> so here's the China series. <laughs> So we have as well some works downstairs just to give a little impression. Here, yeah, this is this beautiful still life. Still life is something in his work as well. No? This is it's amazing. The, the small still life is still one of my favorites. Uh, it's really, hmm. Yeah, you have chosen it for the catalog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this we will see as well downstairs. That this was one of the newest series as well at that time, huh? that yes. was in 2017. And we had then shortly after your opening, we had an opening here in the gallery where we were showing this series, we had Noodle Soup Talk and um, in 1994 and downstairs we had the Californian uh, wildflowers. We will have a look at this as well later on. I think it was very important at that time to show that he also went to different countries and yeah. did his portrait studies because people tended to think of him as the African photographer, whatever that is. And, yeah. uh, but he's not actually he's even interested in other societies and uh, people in the margin, margins of societies. Uh, I think it was really, really a good add to the exhibition to have the Beijing series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here we have Kin. So this is a very important series for him as well. And, for me, uh, Kin. Yeah. Yeah. For me, Kin is the heart of his work. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It's a very yeah. big series. It starts, it's coming from himself, including his family members. Uh, so. This is why it had the biggest space in the exhibition because it's so important. 
Ja. So and Kin was the idea. He's, um, he was uh, his his wife was pregnant. And then he was was uh, yeah, asking it himself what it means to be father in in his country in South Africa, and then he started to to photograph right, to do the series. Yeah, he was yeah. What would it mean for his kids to grow up in a in a country like South Africa, torn between apartheid and uh, and, and and modernity and like a country in transition. And so he started off with his family, that's Peter, who was his son, uh, yeah. there's his wife, uh, there's his nanny, there's also the woman who worked as a maid for his grandmother. Um, and then, as it would say, the circle got bigger and bigger and he went into all parts of society. So you really have to have... Uh, in still life and portraits, uh, complete analysis of the South African society. <laughs> yeah, this is a, the, it's an, his parents. Huh? His parents, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did this um, exhibition, Kin, we did here in the gallery as well, one year earlier before uh, and, and it was amazing I, I think it's it's I, I remember the last day of the show I was going around and looking for hours again on this on all the pictures there are so many details in there here this for example and it's so so this is one yeah. of the more of the most popular motives of the yeah. series maybe. Right. yeah also sold out since long yeah. Yeah, this is him again. <laughs> <laughs> With his daughter this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fine. Just continue quickly because then we go downstairs together with you. Ah, oh, yeah, here is this, uh, this series that oh, you took to planes. That's people sleeping on the planes. Uh, yeah. It was the infrared technique. Uh, and this is the most funny series, I think, of the whole yeah. Today we see so many people with nose and, and mouth masks, and these uh, people are wearing only eye masks, so <laughs> <laughs> covering the part of the face that can leave um, be left open today. <laughs> One has honey collectors. This is another series. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and here we are in Nollywood. Yeah, and Nolly was a film, has also a lot of humor. Um, it's the third, third biggest uh, film industry in the world, Nollywood in Nigeria. I didn't know that before, to be honest. Uh, I only knew about Bollywood and Hollywood. And so he worked with characters from these films. It's typical films produced on a low budget level in Nigeria. And um, yeah, so the results. Uh, Somewhere between uh, film roles and, but also the traditional attitudes in Nigeria or, or traditions in terms of body paint and masks, etc. <laughs> very bizarre, huh? very, very strange. Very bizarre, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here, Katya. Yes. Yeah, I love the couple, it's really great. <laughs> 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 but this is great too. <laughs> so, and here we are at the hyena series. Big, big, large formats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a contradiction between the urban and the wild. That yeah. You stand in front of these pictures and you can't understand it, what's happening. And there were a lot of rumors about the guys, it, but in the end, they were just doing a spectacle and uh, and selling traditional medicine. So uh, they weren't violent or dangerous at all, but it seems so. <laughs> so and then you you had this little space built in the space with the health series. So which yes. this is. One of my favorite works as well by Peter. Yeah, my yeah. too. It's, uh, it's, it's, there's a place in hell for me and my friends. There's Peter again. Yeah. <laughs> Being part of the series. 
And um, yeah, that's uh, people from his surrounding and he manipulated the, the color channels. So skin color can even up and all the imperfections of your face become visible. And, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, there you can see it. It's, it's scary somehow. Also clownesque at, at some points. Um, yeah, but it's all about imperfections and he manipulates reality to point out to other realities. So yeah. it's also important to know about Peter. He's very artistic in his approach. He's not like a mere documentary photographer. He's much more of an artist photographer. Hmm. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, and it's something like post-apocalyptic as well. As yeah. And, and we, have, we are all the same color. And uh, so I think there's so much that you can... Um, that is included in this work. It goes beyond, yeah. beyond the surface. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then here we are, the, the last, I think that was the last series, was uh, yeah. Californian wildflowers. Yes, that was uh, in LA and in San Francisco. Also very important for the show because I asked Peter what he always wanted to show and he said, Oh, I always wanted to show the Californian wildflowers. And these are people living uh, in the Tenderloin district and on Skid Row in LA and in um, San Francisco. And he yeah. just photographed them and just worked with the natural sunlight. Normally he has always a setting. So uh, the light is quite different. And then there are majestic photographs like that one, one of my favorites. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of a Madonna he's photographed yeah. there, and there again we see how much he references um, even art history in such a situation. Uh, I think it's uh, and what the interesting thing about the series is that he really, if you look at the pictures, you feel dignity. You don't feel sorry mm. for the persons living on the street. They are all captured with dignity. You you Absolutely. really. Get uh, get a feeling for their personality. There are great still lives in that series as well, commenting, always almost saying more about the people he photographed than the the portraits themselves. So, uh, like spilled milk or uh, smashed watermelon, or something, uh, commenting their state of life. But uh, yeah, they, it's a really really strong series, I think. Hmm. And sometimes they look back on him, so it's a it's one um, encounters like most of the time. But some of them couldn't get in contact with him; they just were not able to to uh, notice that he wanted to take a picture of them. So that were there were some very special situations. I think he he told that in this in the little text on the on the series. So that's him. That's the same. <laughs> also, a California wildflower. <laughs> exactly. South African wildflower. South African wildflower, yeah, that's more yeah. true. <laughs> so that was uh, the little tour on remember this exhibition, this great exhibition that you that you did. So I think we go downstairs now to look at some 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 originals. And that was a very important um, exhibition that you did. And um, so it started in 2017 and then it was in, in, in Dortmund and in, in Lisbon at the Barado Museum. And then of course, for somebody, I think he was 42 at that time when, when the exhibition ended. So the exhibition uh, history ended. And um, I think, and must have been for him really a big big thing what is next yeah. so in this early stage of life to have already a yeah, kind of retrospective mid-career uh, ex exhibition was something huh? and um, yeah and we have some examples here of what happened next this is the the series La Cucaracha and um, yeah, we would like to, to show you some of them and, um, and to show you some others that we have here as well. So, 
So one is one of La Cucaracha. You were here at the opening, which was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, together with Peter, I just posted the the photograph of you and Peter and Salim and me on on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, it was and, like a reunion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a reunion. It was really fantastic. So this is the the, the work. Um, maybe Katja can tell us a little bit about this. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the burning bush. And uh, from the title, we, we immediately get to know that it's not just what we see or not just a scenery um, in the landscape with a burning cactus, but he uh, yeah, references immediately uh, the story from the Bible, um, Moses uh, meeting God in, in the burning bush, and the, the bush is in flames, but it, it's not, it, it won't burn down, so it won't perish. Maybe a great metaphor also for many other things happening nowadays. And the brilliance is incredible. So this is really something you you want to stand in front of. We, we have a very good um, smartphone here, but um, of course we cannot transmit the quality of this photograph. Um, it's the texture of the flames overlaps mm -hmm. with the texture of the background and the texture of this, this plant and um, the colors are so brilliant. And this is really typical for the whole series um, he took in Mexico. Sometimes you think all his photographs are very strong in colors, but this is even stronger because the, this visuality, um, the energy in the Mexican colors is really, um, yeah, overwhelmed him as well. Yeah, I think there are two new steps in the Mexico series because I think on the one hand it's what you said, Katya, that they are so colorful and so brilliant, uh, especially the fire, but also the portraits, they're really glowing. Huh? And the second thing is that the always played, as I said before, with art history and, and uh, having typical poses from paintings and art history. Uh, and now it becomes so obvious that he is dealing also with the Bible, that he's dealing with, with uh, concrete examples from artistry, and he is re instinating them, uh, uh, reusing them for photography. So I think there are really big steps in this, in this series. So he really yes. found a way um, to, to push his work forward, I think. Hmm. Yeah, the portraits are, are really showing real people with their um, very intense presence. Um, and he really met them. I mean, it's, they always um, give back this, this intense look. It's, it's not just Peter looking at them or, or the viewers looking at, at the people, but also the people looking back on us. Um, and at the same time, it's, more, um, it's less personal than in the other series. He, he, I think he brought to Mexico a lot of um, ideas, a lot of um, images, a lot of um, yeah, classics from art history and, and mixed um, these images with um, the images of the people he, he met in reality. I completely agree with you. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, maybe from the other side, so just to... Yeah, here, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and then here, another reference to, to painting. Yeah. yeah, this is a very famous uh, fr French Renaissance painting with two sisters, and um, it has the same title, Gabrielle and one of her sisters. So he, he really, it's not, not a, a, he doesn't um, only play with the references, but it's really explicit. And this is Don Quixote. A man sitting on a donkey, so a wonderful pun at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think the others are too dark. So, ah, yeah, Yeah, you have of course all these these art history art history references. Yeah, mm. with, the, with the high with the upper um, portrait, you think maybe of a painting by Gauguin, and um, the lower um, portrait is uh, called "Reclining Nude." So um, 
um, a, a topic that you encounter many, many times in art history. And um, he does not um, cite the names of the people. And in the other series, you always find the names. Or in the case of the hyena series, um, uh, there are even the names of the animals in the titles. And here it's, it's more um, a general uh, title. That's new. That's new as well, well, that he's not naming them personally. Because yeah. in all the other series, uh, whenever he could, apart from Californian Wildflowers, maybe, um, there's always the name of the portrait person uh, in the title. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah, it's also like um, he, uh, maybe this one, the tattooed um, uh, man in the, uh, in the lower image. El Precio del, del Pecado. Yeah, the price of the sin. Um, he doesn't tell the story, he just gives us um, the image and the rest is up to us. So most of the time he wouldn't tell us the backgrounds of the stories. It's just what we see and um, it's not a narrative. And also the whole Mexican series is not a documentary on the country, but really um, a, more a collection of single images. So this we had already, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this is a very yeah. famous one as well. Yeah. You liked this very much as well, huh? In the when you saw the exhibition, huh? Yeah, yeah, I liked it very much because it's, it's so much, it's still so much about contradiction as well. Huh? He always yeah. with this contradiction and As Katya said, he is not telling the stories, but he's suggesting stories. So, and uh, this is what, what makes it so interesting. And we really want to know what this is about. Huh? Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then he becomes very obvious, like in a Christ-like picture, uh, like the one with the sun crown above. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I've never seen him that obvious before. <laughs> yeah. 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 This work is called The Snake Charmer. And um, uh, we had a little artist talk during the um, opening of our show and Priska asked uh, Peter if he would um, yeah, give us a hint on how this image was, uh, was created. And he just uh, had a broad grin in his face and um, uh, made a pause and then just said one word, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Again, leaving up to us um, to yeah, make up the whole, the rest of the story. Yeah, that sounds very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, and here we have the the Chinese series, mm -hmm. flat noodle soup talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, here he was still a little bit more subtle uh, than in the Mexico series. I mean, yeah. he was he was invited to go to Beijing. Uh, he never was really interested in going there, and then he was really intrigued by how the society is, is changing there and he got into touch with art students i think this is an art student uh, as well having this really big uh, big earrings and like always he's always interested in people um, from the margins of society as i said before uh, and um, this is he got access and once again did a really good portrait of the society, if you go to the next one, was there the girl with in front of the cherry tree, for example? Yeah. So here, you, at the first glance, for example, you think, well, what a cliche, cliche uh, of, of China, no? You have yeah. the traditional dress, and then you have the, the cherry blossom, but the girl is pierced. Um, yeah. So there's always this little crack between tradition and the society which is changing and, 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 and China is changing a lot and consumerism and things like that uh, enter into the pictures as well. So um, yeah, that's a great one as well. It's also one of my favorites. Uh, it's not what you expect to see when you hear about a portrait series on, on, on Beijing, I think. Uh, yeah. And it's so full of sadness, but it's also so full of, of, of a, all the tattoos it seems to be a big story behind that and uh yeah it's, i think it's one of the strongest works in the series <laughs> yeah fantastic 
Yeah, you have it all, a kind of aggression as well, different, yeah. different moods he captured again. Uh, so maybe we show, uh, oh yeah, here's more from this Chinese series. So have to okay. These ones you had in the exhibition as well, huh? This is... Yeah, I mean, this, oh, yeah. The, the one, yeah, this one always reminded me of Olympia, of, uh, of Manet's Olympia or Tizian's Olympia. Uh, so yeah. a woman reclining again. Uh, I really yeah. love that even in terms of lighthouse, dealing with light. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's a very art historical, classy portrait, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we had the first so where was this? Just a moment, please. I hear Supreme Court. This. So I would like to show you this. So we think this is a very important series by Peter. Yeah, it's actually, it's two series. One is Botswana and uh, one is Ghana. Uh, yeah. The the solicitors and the judges. And um, yeah, this is also about society. I mean, these are European traditions now transferred by colonialism into uh, to South Africa or to, to Africa and uh, to Botswana and to Ghana. Yeah. And then uh, in the post-colonial world, uh, they, they continue these traditions, but now they frame the black faces. Uh, so yeah. I think it's... Uh, these are, and then at the same time they are, look like paintings as well. Especially the judge. I mean, it looks like a Velasquez painting or something. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's really uh, it's it's really really striking. I think. Hmm. Yeah, and here a woman. And a woman yeah. as well. Yeah, and a woman. Yeah. yeah, Uta. I think we we are nearly. We wanted half an hour to speak with you, and now it's 50 minutes already, so okay. <laughs> time, time is flying, and it's so nice, and I could continue for another two hours, maybe. And, um, but uh, here's, here's Katja as well. So, but um, thank you so much. That was really amazing. Thank you very much. It was great seeing you and speaking to you, and... Um, yeah, hope to see you soon again, huh? In Thank you. in person. In person. Yeah, that would be nice. That would, would, that be, would really be very nice. nice huh? And many thanks to you. It was really nice to go through through the exhibition again. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.